Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Committee of the Whole meeting to order. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey that the agenda for the October 3rd, 2016 regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted. I do have a um, an amendment to that. Councillor Kersey, do you want to make that amendment as well? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I'd, I'd like to add a letter that uh, I received um, from uh, John and Wendy Abbott. And uh, attached to that is also a bit of a um, petition signed by other members of uh, that little community on Pickwick. And I'd like to add that to the agenda, Mr. Mayor. And perhaps we could deal with that under uh, the public when we receive the public. Report. Thank you. So, so we'll put that under 452. Okay, immediately following the uh, monthly report. Uh, call the question on Councillor Kersey's amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. Now to the main motion as amended. Other amendments or changes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Carried as amended. Thank you. Next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members have any conflicts of interest they need to disclose on any of the items on the agenda? None, Mr. Mayor. Council no, Mr. saying no. Can that be so... Uh, included in the minutes. Now we move to department reports, community planning and development. We have uh, a couple of reports here. The first has been moved by Councillor Kersey. And the motion is that Committee of the Whole receive the report for information as it pertains to application file number AM 1114 and 2016-19-02014 regarding part of, regarding part of Township Lot 171, and that's known as Saffron Meadows. And that the plan of subdivision for Saffron Meadows be drafted, draft approved subject to the conditions listed in Appendix 2, and that the mayor be authorized to sign the draft plan as approved 20 days after notice of council's decision has been given as required by the Planning Act, provided no appeals of the decision has been lodged, and that the draft approval be given for three years, after which approval will lapse unless an extension is requested by the developer and granted by council. And the committee direct planning staff to prepare the bylaw to amend the portion of land located on the south side of Port Robinson Road, west, <coughs> it says west of Rice Road, it should be east of Rice Road, or oh, west of Rice Road, it is correct, sorry, rest, west of Rice Road, Regional Road 54, legally described as part of Township Lot 171 from Agricultural A and a Zone Specific Residential Multiple 1 RM1-264 to a Site Specific Residential 2R2 for Site Specific Residential Multiple 1s and several Site Specific Open Space Zones for Council's consideration and further the Council approve the Zoning Bylaw Amendment. I'm going to actually call on the, uh, the director to just give some comments and uh, inform council and the community how this plan uh, differs from what we saw at our public meeting in July. Madam Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there was a public meeting held earlier this summer uh, with respect to this draft plan of subdivision and the zoning bylaw amendment. And at that time, what was presented was a draft plan that consisted of 71 single detached units, uh, 48 street town units, and two blocks um, that were condominium blocks, one being 19 units and the other being 45 units. Uh, in addition, there were some open space blocks and stormwater management blocks. But the total number of residential units was 183. Um, and at that public meeting, the uh, representatives for the developers spoke about wanting to do a potential change to the draft plan. So we did receive a revised um, draft plan in August, and that's what's before you this evening. So this uh, revised draft plan consists of still 71 single detached units. Um, the number of street townhouses has increased to 63. There are still two blocks for um, block condominium development, one 19 unit block, and then what the block that was 45 units has been reduced to 32. Um, so there's a total now of 185 residential units. The 
also um, where the change happened primarily is that block of land that fronts along Port Robinson Road. Um, there was a single detached dwelling uh, that was outside of the plan of subdivision initially back in July. That's been incorporated in. It will be demolished and it will form part of that block for street townhouses. Um, and there was a subsequent kind of readjustment to the stormwater management block to um, deal with that change of incorporating street townhouses along the um, Port Robinson Road frontage. And then the only other change was a minor change and it was an extension of uh, Street D through to the adjacent lands um, so that uh, it would break up that large uh, block and provide for a more appropriate uh, block uh, lengths. So overall, um, there's a slight increase in the number of residentials uh, units by two uh, and that's an increase in the number of uh, street uh, townhouse units. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I, I'd like to ask questions of our, our uh, director of planning with regard to her report. And I'm looking specifically at uh, her comments regarding policy B1.7.7.4.2H. This is found on page 20 of 65 report and the comments make reference to um, uh, the aspect of the plan uh, dealing with with lanes and I note that um, what it was being requested is a plan that has a lane but not a rear lane a front lane paralleling for Robinson Road. So perhaps before I ask any specific questions, maybe the, uh, the our director of planning might might make some preliminary comment with regard to why that is there in that form as opposed to the form that is actually present <coughs> in the official plan. <coughs> Madam director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, so the policy that is in the official plan um, that Councillor Rubiak is referring to, I will just read it out. It states that um, development on the basis of public or private lanes is encouraged and may be required where dwelling units front on onto a collector main street. Um, Port Robinson Road is identified as a collector uh, main street in the official plan. And then um, in the demonstration plans that are attached as an appendix mm -hmm. to the official plan, it illustrates um, uh, a rear laneway product uh, along the Port Robinson Road collector. So that is uh, how it's illustrated in the uh, appendix of the official plan. Um, specifically with this policy it speaks to public and private lanes it's not specific as to front lanes or rear lanes and it indicates that they are encouraged and may be required but doesn't say that they shall be required so in um, meetings with the developer um, he put forth this option of a front laneway and um, you know, said that that meant the intent of the official plan um, because the plan is not specific about uh, rear lanes or front lanes, it's just about lanes in general and that could be a front laneway. Um, and it is along the collector road and there's a policy in the official plan that speaks to those demonstration plans um, that are attached as appendix to our official plan as being for guidance and are not um, necessarily uh, set. So that is how we came to have um, front rent laneways along the um, street townhouses on Port Robinson Road. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, and I thank the uh, director for her, for her answer. Um, My, my recollection of our discussions of this some years ago when we were going through the official plan 
was that when we talked about laneways, we, we meant rear laneways. And we meant rear uh, laneways, and, and there wouldn't have been much, much room for uh, ambiguity with respect to, uh, to our meaning, at least, because we understood that what we wanted by way of, of streetscape were housing, houses that were closer to the street. And because these were collectors, of course, we didn't want to have uh, uh, driveways going into the collector, and, and it was felt that an efficient way of dealing with that traffic was with with rear lanes going into into driveways, and I can recall a discussion that we had with some detail as to what the nature of the laneway would be, because some of us would have made reference to our own experiences with lanes in older communities in the past, and we were concerned that, that the laneways would take on a certain look, and we weren't happy with that. So I can recall that we had a, a pretty detailed discussion with regard to, uh, to rear laneways. And it seems to me, uh, Mr. Mayor, that, that Putting a front laneway between the housing and the and, and the collector is a 180 degree mm -hmm. uh, variance from what our intent was within the official official plan. Uh, this is this is a, a complete distortion of what it is that we had in mind, at least in in, in my uh, in, in my recollection. And I don't know whether your colleagues uh, on council uh, have the same recollection that I do. Um, I'm really not uh, not happy with the plan that that was put forward. I think that that it, it, it <coughs> plays with the words in the OP and, and tries to uh, squeeze out of it a, a definition that that's clearly not what we what we meant. I would have thought that the language was was clear with respect that lanes were were, were encouraged and may be required. Um, that that said that to, to me anyway that if it was going to be required by anyone it would be by council, and that uh, we could choose to make that uh, that mandatory on that basis. <coughs> and second, just looking at all of the uh, the documentation that's there, including the the appendix, I think quite clearly we meant rear lanes not front lanes. We meant housing close to the road, not away from it. I would suggest that, that we have two problems here. One is um, the, the specific plan is presented, and the other is uh, with regard to the language. Um, if, if, if the language can support a completely contrary meaning to the one that we had, then, then, then clearly we need to think about that. I would hate to think that we would need to, to make an amendment to the OP because of, of, of that. But um, I'm, I'm really concerned with this. My, I, I'm, I'm not going to, to support the, uh, uh, the motion on that basis. I, I think that more work needs to be done. I think that's a pretty specific and, and important element of our, our vision of the town, and that uh, this is a, a pretty massive deviation from what it is that we had in mind. Those are my views, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'd be interested in hearing what, what colleagues have to say with regard to that. Okay. Thank you very much. I think Councillor Kersey. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had similar reservations uh, to Councillor Riviak. Um, I think we were hoping for street face construction and not creating a parking lot in front of um, um, the dwellings. I think that's the risk that we have here is that not only is it not street faced, but now you're creating an area where we, you know, typically townhouses have much higher density. We could end up a, a parking lot along those little laneways. So I would be um, thinking that we should be perhaps sending this back and, um, and asking them to take another look at it. And if we need to change the language in the official plan to make it more specific, I don't know that that would be regarded as a as a full blown OP amendment. Would, could it not be uh, considered minor as to language and and not require going through an OP uh, amendment process? Okay, you raised a kind of a separate issue. Um, are you able to assist the councillor? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. I would think that changing the language in the official plan would require an official plan amendment. Um, but that is, uh, you know, should. Council direct staff to do that. That is certainly something that we could um, undertake to do. 
Um, it wouldn't be so much as a, I don't believe um, that type of amendment would require regional approval. It might be exempt from regional approval, and that would be something I would need to clarify with the region on. I see. Councilor? So, uh, Mr. Mayor, if there's a number of us that um, feel the same way, uh, and there may be other issues yeah. brought to bear, is it reasonable for us then to just send it back to staff and ask that once we itemize any other issues, that ask them to take thinking, another look Councilor. at it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. So, uh, are there other? Anyone else want to comment on that? On that piece, the rear, rear laneway. I think it would be. I'm going to. I'd like to comment in that. In that, this is um, the, the demonstration plan includes rear laneways in a number of locations. My recollection is that this is the first time that a uh, development is coming forward with looking for draft plan approval in those specific rear laneway identified areas. And to you know, to 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 say, well, this is okay, would just signal that for the rest that that's okay too so I think it's important if council is so inclined to to say this is important and what I'm hearing from a few councillors is that it is then I think we should send it back and, and suggest to staff that that it be a point of negotiation it was raised I think in the public meeting um, and we had said I think or at least I had recall saying that that was something that that uh, we wanted in that and staff followed through I think with that negotiation and then now they're bringing this to us based on those negotiations. To the second point that Councillor Kersey and, and Councillor Rubiak raised in terms of amending the official plan, I would, I would think that uh, staff could also look at the wording of the plan if it is and may be required where dwelling units front onto Collector Main Street, well the requirement might be from this council to say, by the way, when we require it, it's a rear lane. So maybe we don't need Obviously, we heard from the director, and she'll look into it. But, and I'm not a lawyer either. But may, I'm hopeful that that perhaps uh, we may not need an official plan amendment, but rather we might clarify that. So, um, the rest of it, I think, uh, as I looked at it, I couldn't see anything else. I was pleased that they added that additional connection, uh, which was important and raised in the public meeting, and the storm ponds and the cycling walking availability, etc. <coughs> Does anyone else have any other concerns? In That's my main concern. So, Councillor Kersey? No, not a specific concern, but a question. Uh, there's a significant amount of land that's allocated to two stormwater ponds plus the stream. And I wondered if there is uh, any plan to utilize those areas for parks and walking trails and all of that. If, has there been thought around that, or is that incorporated automatically? within the, the master plan. Madam Director. Mr. Mayor, through you, yes, there has been, um, there are some requirements for uh, pedestrian connection, uh, pathway system through the channel um, area. That's one of the reasons why the channel uh, area is as wide as it is, is to accommodate a pathway. Um, there will also be the extension of the multi-use trail along Rice Road will extend all the way down along Rice Road as well. Very good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Director, y you didn't mention the, um, the skink, uh, but there are holding, uh, holding provisions that are being incorporated in the motion that's before us currently. Before we send that back, can you just inform Council about that? Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, the, what we were recommending was that the, um, the draft plan approval, and you saw that there is a phasing plan. Uh, that would be the first phase, which would be the northern half of the development proceeding, and then the southern half would uh, proceed at a later date. There is still some outstanding um, uh, reports required uh, with respect to the five-line uh, skink which is an endangered uh, species. Um, their last um, kind of uh, review of their skinks and the stink, skink study in this area is to be completed, I believe, this month in October. And then the reports will be done and presented to uh, MNR. And so that area that was within the habitat and the buffer area is placed in a holding zone and would be lifted once uh, we know that the um, ministry is satisfied with the outcome of the uh, 
studies around that habitat. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who wants to move this? I, 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 Councillor Kersey, I'm going to say my understanding is you want to refer it to a staff to negotiate, renegotiate rear lanes as guided by the secondary plan? Yes. Okay. Uh, to that, anyone? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That uh, carry, referral carries, and we look forward to hearing back from that. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Papp that uh, Committee of the Whole received the September 2016 Community Planning and Development Report for information. Questions, comments? Got to open it. Hold on a second. I alluded earlier, I'm going to say this, I alluded earlier to the uh, building permits and uh, the activity that's going on, and we see that it's quite quite extensive um, compared to last year uh, and also the the type and the complexity of the building permits I think is is quite impressive and impressive in the fact that staff are keeping up with that keeping it under the required days uh, small buildings there were three and uh, there's 15 days allowance staff on average were able to issue that permit within 11 days the large buildings um, 20 days were able to do it in 16 so um, great great work on behalf of staff and I know they are always busy and <laughs> very yeah. in and out of the building uh, extensively and working on that and some of those large buildings require many many um, uh, you know inspections etc anyone else to any of the items in the director's report are you ready for calling the question all those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Please pass along thanks to uh, building staff. Thank you, it's been moved by Councillor Kersey that the Committee of the Whole receive the September 2016 Corporate Services Report for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a question. Uh, through you to our treasurer with respect to the e-billing mm -hmm. and and maybe I misread it but the inference I got from this is that corporate services wants to move entirely to e-billing with respect to water and that sort of thing and if that's the case how are we going to deal with folks that don't have computers or we don't have their emails all of those sort of practical things and director. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are uh, working uh, to encourage e-billing. Obviously, if there is individuals that aren't able to do it, just like with our check process, everyone's, uh, we're encouraging everyone to be on EFT. There are some institutions that aren't available to take that. Uh, many will have to get to that format eventually, but we will accommodate for that. Um, the e-billing for taxation is coming out in early January, February, so we're hoping to make it with the February billing so that we can reduce the uh, cost of the mailings to the individuals, the cost of resources with respect to paper and ink and, and uh, the overhead and such. So um, we know that other municipalities like Toronto and Hamilton and stuff already do e-billing for taxation, so we're excited that's coming. Um, so we are looking to do uh, what we've done in the past as an incentive program with the water billing. We've got uh, a bulk of our individuals on our residents on e-billing at that time, so we're looking to do another incentive program in that manner to try and get more on. Councillor? So will you have a lead introduction to the type of program that you're, you're proposing? Will you put it on the website and send out, are you going to be sending out a flyer or how are you going to advise the community of that incentive program? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, absolutely. As we did with the last program, we, we developed a communication strategy working with our marketing uh, coordination coordinator. Um, so we will do the same format this time. Uh, we may wait till the February billing and put an insert into the uh, taxation billing with respect to that, or just put uh, notices on our um, uh, uh, water bills. Uh, it was very successful the last time we did offer little prizes every once in a while so every month we were getting hundreds of, of residents going on to the e-billing so uh, we're looking to bring forward to something to council you'll see it before it gets launched perfect thank you thank you others to e-billing others to the director's report Councillor Durley and then thank Councilor you mr Pat. mayor is there any progress in uh, 
negotiations with MPAC. They're, they seem to be dragging their feet on things, and uh, you know there is a concern that their uh, local contacts are diminishing, and it's getting more and more difficult to talk to them. Why are they hiding? We need their service. We're paying them good money for the service. How can we improve it? Madam Director. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, we have not had any progress dealing with MPAC, unfortunately. We are having significant issues on timing and picking up of uh, building permits that have closed, occupancies, uh, severances are taking months and months and months to get uh, through. Um, and it's interesting when we have a new taxation clerk in-house that um, we're still having the same issues over and over again. So we've drafted a, a one-page um, document uh, uh, so that uh, there's a conversation that's going to happen between the mayor and a member of uh, MPAC, and we're hoping that that will highlight it. We've also asked our local coordinator to come down uh, bi-weekly to meet with us to kind of keep on top of all the outstanding items. Uh, it seems like when it goes through email, it just gets lost in that email uh, transition and it never gets responded to. So we thought that this was a focus that we could concentrate on. Um, our concern uh, in, uh, in corporate services is the growth that's coming. And if it's not picked up uh, constantly with respect to how fast it's developing, uh, we can lose sight of that because we are growing faster than most municipalities at this time. And I did re <coughs> reiterate that with our contact from uh, IMPACT the last time we met. So we are, are staying on top of it. Every two weeks we meet with this individual and we give them the list of the outstanding items. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it's a takeaway and then but at the next meeting we still haven't got any results. So we are, we're trying diligently to work with that. We're gonna work with council on that as well. And I suggest the letter go to the CAO of uh, of the company and let them. Maybe he's not aware of this thing. Like there, there definitely seems to be a failure to communicate, like Cool and Luke used to say. Really, if I just might comment, um, the the treasurer and I have had the discussion, um, and there are two members of the MPAC board in Niagara. One is Mayor Senzik from the city of St. Catharines, and the other is. Bev Hodgson from who lives in the city of Niagara Falls and uh, it was my proposal that that perhaps we try and schedule a meeting with those individuals along with whoever MPAC has and I would actually uh, like to invite you to that meeting if we can set that up given your expertise on on MPAC um, so I think it's gotten my understanding is it's gotten to the point that we do need to ratchet it up a little and and have that discussion with our two Niagara representatives and, and raise these issues. So if you're amenable to that, and if council agrees with that type of uh, mm -hmm. proposal to move forward, we'll, uh, we'll schedule that meeting. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much, Councillor, for that. And Councillor Papp, you said that was on the same issue? Same issue. Okay. It's a, Yeah, it's important to the community, and um, I, th I think e even when we talk about building permits and all of that, so I know that staff are, uh, are working on that. Um, as well, so it's important to make sure that things are up to up to speed as well. Any other items uh, on that? I had a question for the treasurer on a different part of the report, and that is just some of the um, some of the tenders. So thank you very much for updating that tender report. Um, I guess I'll just raise the, raise the issue, and you don't have to answer it now. But there's a number of them that have. Um, one bid, um, and they're awarded, and they seem to be in in budget, etc. So, I don't know if that's an issue or not an issue. It's must be, you know it's allowed under the, the procurement bylaw, um, and I presume that you'll if there's ever an issue with any of those, you'll raise them with council. The the single bid um, proposals. So, one always hopes to get many bids so that you can get the pricing. I don't know if you want to comment on that. Uh, uh, yes, sure. three, Mr. Mayor. Um, just on some of them that, uh, you know, I, I've, I'm looking at them as well. Um, they are the ones, the only individual that could accommodate the, the true needs of the town with respect to the, uh, the document that was put out in the RFP. Um, I know one of them <coughs> was the portables. Uh, there was no other company that could accommodate the, the uh, number of portables we needed for the events that we had. Uh, so that individual, even though, um, what you don't see is everybody that's pulled for it but did not submit a bid. Okay. So many pull and then they get more clarification on what the requirements are and then they're just unable to bid because they can't accommodate us. Okay, thank you. As long as the, you know, they're not so specific that it's only written for a, you know, a Ford F-150, you have to buy that kind of truck. <laughs> and, yes, and just on the that. Any truck. 
Um, but to pick on Ford, with sorry. With the e-procurement, we're able to, what's nice about it, we're able to watch who's pulling. So if we only have one person pulling, we do then go out a few days before the bid closes to other vendors to ask them to come in and okay. look at the contract. That's good. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Anything further on the uh, Treasurer's report? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak that the Committee of the Whole received the September 2016 Fire and Bylaw <coughs> Services Report for information. Questions, comments? Uh, thanks, Chief, for providing additional information regarding medical calls, as discussed by Council last week, last uh, meeting. Anything else? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Durley that Committee of the Whole received the September 2016 Human Resources Report for information. Questions, comments? Pleased to see that we're participating in the United Way with an increased goal, so thank you for that. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Moved by Councillor King. The Committee of the Whole received the September 2016 Public Works Report for information. Questions or comments? Councillor Kersey and I'm going to go to Councillor Pat first. Yeah. Councillor Pat. <laughs> On behalf of my dog, Casey, <laughs> I noticed an item in there about the the removal of the waste bags from the for the pickup. So I know that uh, the CEO received a couple letters from residents and that. I just, where are we at? Are we st is that still under reconsideration or is that pretty well gone? Uh, you want to answer, Mr. Sam? Just Go ahead. quickly. Mr. CEO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I was thinking out loud. Uh, yeah, no, we'll consider that part of the uh, 17 budget. We'll come back with a recommendation. Thank you. I'll have to declare, declare a contest. <laughs> Why do you get remuneration you, from your dog? <laughs> 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 Did you know that? Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Others? To any of the other? Oh, I'm sorry. Councillor Kersey, you had a different uh, I have a couple things, Mr. Mayor. Um, firstly, uh, under capital projects, um, yeah. We speak about the Fawn Hill Library lighting panel, a model railroad building, etc., the Harold Black Park, and that there's a comment made that no quotations uh, were received for these projects, and yet in a previous, in our in our uh, discussion at council, we approved an increase in the budget for the um, uh, Harold Black concession building repair. So how does that jive if we have no, if we've received no quotes? But we now need more money. Ms. Clementio. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we went out a second time to reach out to more contractors to see if we could, because these were informal quotes, and so we call as many people we can that uh, know, we know do the work, and uh, reach out to them and ask for quotations. We so were able to get so it. we now have specific quotes that meet our needs. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, to that item? Oh, not to that specific item. Uh, in that paragraph, but not that specific okay. item. Okay. Councillor Kersey, do you want to let others? Yeah, let's. Um, yeah. Let Councillor sure. Junkin? Uh, I'd see on the, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the uh, Director of Public Works, I see that the, uh, uh, you, notice, you note that the uh, Sawmill Bridge has, uh, mm -hmm. is now completed and the project <coughs> is ahead of schedule and under budget. Was it under budget? Could you give us an idea of how much under budget? Was that $10 or $10,000 or, or maybe you haven't done the final, final numbers yet? Madam Director. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't think I'm ready to give a number yet because okay. we're still collecting. There's some issues with restoration with one of the particular neighbors. We want to make sure that we get all of that addressed and the final invoices in before I'd okay. pull the number. But. We are comfortable that we won't be going over or we're not at budget. We just don't know how much under we are at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you. Under capital projects again, I note the, um, uh, the item with regard to Pelham Town Square Arches rehabilitation. 
It's good to know that the arches are, are in relatively good shape. And according to the report, with careful monitoring and reasonable maintenance, they should provide several more years of service. So my question is not so much to uh, the director, but to all of us. And the question is, then what? What are we um, planning for in terms of making permanent in some years to come what is a, a, a replacement vote is clearly a, a temporary temporary establishment do we have a plan or perhaps staff can can help us with this anybody want to attack that mr. CEO uh, thank you mr. Mayor. no we don't have a plan um, they are something that is on I should say we don't have a specific plan for what we would replace it with, although there's been some discussion uh, it's been identified and we'll we'll come back uh, uh, with recommendations when it's when they're <clears throat> and just to build on that, I think when council approved the uh, funding in this year's budget for this uh, restoration, mm -hmm. uh, there was recognition then that that something had to be done in the future. I can't recall whether there's something earmarked in the future, but I'd ask you to add that to your list. The CEO has indicated there is. Okay. So you can add that to your list to check when we have uh, budget deliberations uh, over coming weeks. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Clearly we have time, but maybe even sometime through the course of next year we might think about putting some <coughs> money aside to, for some creative effort to come back to us with a plan. But it, it did strike me that we have a, 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 um, an important part of the town. I won't call it a monument just yet, but uh, but it's an important feature, and it's good that it's going to last for a little while, but I think we need to look ahead and understand what we're going to do instead. Thank you. Others? Councillor Kersey, I think you had some other items there on your list. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, two other issues. Uh, one, I believe it's in this report, we speak about assumption of uh, the two subdivisions and uh, that we've inspected the water, wastewater, but but the civil aspect of the subdivision is not being inspected by our in-house staff. Who would pay for the consultants to do that off-staff inspection? To you, Mr. Mayor, we are hoping to cover it under the roads engineering budget uh, because we're not using it in full and it's a roads uh, greatly civil work and storm and drainage work. So we are getting quotes right now from uh, local engineering firms to see what their per diem rates would be to finish that work on our behalf. Go ahead. Is, is that a normal process whereby um, we would have to pay to assume that subdivision to complete the inspections? Or is it up to the developer who wants to offload that onto the town? Should they not be responsible for the costs of certifying this, all of the specifications within the subdivision meet the requirements of the and provide reports uh, to that aspect through you mr. mayor it is always uh, our <coughs> practice to do the inspections on for the town for subdivisions coming online we rely on the consultant reports coming in the consultants are hired on behalf of the developer so although we do get final reports with <coughs> as <-part coughs> drawings um, we always, always find deficiencies or discrepancies between the drawings and what's been installed. Um, we've just found it best practice unavoidable that we have to do that final inspection ourselves. And in this particular instance, it's a matter uh, that we have to go out as a matter of we don't have time in house to deal with it? Through you, Mr. Mayor, purely that, yeah, because of the ongoing capital projects and managing what we have, and we have one inch tech leaving to go on mat leave. Uh, so we're bringing in an alternate and doing some overlap. We, we simply don't have the time to do the, the work properly. To that, Councillor Rubia. Thank you. Uh, I found that interesting, uh, Mr. Mayor. So, so just, just for clarity, we do the inspection, find a deficiency, but it's the contractor then that has to yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, the list deficiency list goes back uh, to the developer, and the developer fixes the Good. the items, has us inspect them <coughs> the final time, and then if we're satisfied, then we okay. initiate the assumption. So our cost is the inspection, their cost is the repair. Seems right. Councillor King. Um, not on to that, that item. Okay. Is anything further to that item? I did have Councillor 
Percy on anything further on that item? Not on that item, no. Okay, uh, Councillor King, can we go to Councillor King? Absolutely. Councillor King. Thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Director. I'm just wondering if you've had any update from the region on the bagging, et cetera, of the lights at Church and Pelham. Thank Thank you. Pelham. There is a reference in the report, Madam Director. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. I have not. Ryan has um, been asked to get in contact and get that sorted this week before the final installation, so I don't have an update for you at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just to that, I last uh, week at Public Works at the Region, we did discuss uh, an extension of an agreement between municipalities and the region regarding uh, lights and traffic signals and all of that, and had the discussion about, you know, the region wants to have their standard and make sure that, that all of the traffic signals are standard across the region and that they can monitor the guts in them uh, as rightly as they should and can control them, etc. Um, and I did ask if the agreement was broad enough that I if we decide to do something else other than the standard traffic signal which is there mm -hmm. um, and is at the library as well and whether they'd be amenable to that and my understanding is that they are and um, so they want to work together with staff on that so that might be something to touch base with the, the group on that and make sure that we don't lock ourselves into an arrangement where we have to put in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some huge thing that they tell us we have to put in, which is what we sort of ended up with. So That's right, exactly. Thank you to, to raising that. Thank you. Councillor Kersey, you got one more or two more? Last one, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, and, and it's coupled with the item that we added on as whatever the number was uh, with respect to the Pickwick Place uh, lighting. Do you want to deal with it next? Well, if you adopt this report, I don't know how that would impact. Okay, go ahead. So, um, I... I received a, a communication from Mr. Abbott, uh, I guess it was over the weekend, and uh, expressing, first of all, his gratitude with staff for, in fact, meeting with the residents of that, that little enclave um, with respect to choosing of the light standard and the light and all of that sort of thing, but that they're taking issue with the height of the light which currently is proposed at 25 feet, when they've been operating for probably 30 years with uh, lights that are approximately 11 feet. And uh, the traffic in this little enclave is pretty minimal. It's uh, predominantly pedestrian, and, and to my knowledge, there's not been any uh, significant issues around the amount of light there. And in fact, it creates an ambiance that the people who bought into that enclave enjoy and, and would like to preserve. Um, so I guess what I'm, what I'm asking, Mr. Mayor, is uh, to our director if there's an op opportunity here for us to consider some for form of, um, you know, uh, compromise. They've put forward perhaps considering a 16-foot height. I realize that it probably wouldn't meet all the ideal standards of lumens per foot and all of the, the lighting uh, levels that are required for streets, but given the long history of the enclave, um, I wonder if there's something that we could do to accommodate them. Ms. Clemencio. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the 25-foot recommendation is a national standard. Um, we adopt those standards. That's what we have paid the design consultant to start from. So if there were any compromise there, uh, we might consider replacing um, street lighting strictly with pedestrian lighting, provided it's acknowledged that the street lighting will no longer be provided to the, to the enclave anymore. Um, it's not recommended. I'm not sure what the consultant will support at this time, but uh, to change the light pole height for street lighting would require us to go back to the designer and to rework the numbers and go um, beyond what the recommended standards are. Uh, so that would be something I would have to take direction from council on. So is it reasonable then to assume that the 10 foot or 11 foot poles that they have there now are really in effect pedestrian lighting? 
I mean, they probably didn't even meet the standards back in the day that that subdivision was put in. Given that they're only 11 foot tall, they're probably pedestrian, were, were envisioned as pedestrian lighting, given that the enclave has a very minimal amount of traffic, not much beyond the number of people who live in that, that area. So would that be a reasonable thing to do if, if they were amenable to that and would acknowledge that? Is that something that we could sit down and have a conversation with them and, and maybe accomplish? And at three, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd want to consult our designer first to find out what the um, proper process would be to go from a lit street technically to a not lit street and make sure that we are covered um, as, a, as a corporation first and then decide what the options that designer recommends that we can take back to the residents. Well, perhaps, uh, Mr. Mayor, we could refer this to staff and ask them to in, undertake uh, what you've just outlined for us, uh, Madam Director, and, and, and that uh, you could bring a report back to us and then engage with the residents at that point. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Go ahead. I, I uh, most certainly can do that. I'm pretty um, we're getting near the end of the year, so the, if we do proceed with that, that could mean that the project would have to get deferred until next year. I think that'd be fine. That'd be fine. Thank you. And I, I think that's the next motion here about oh, receiving okay. the Thank item of correspondence and be referred to staff. So that's some of the commentary on that. Perfect. I think it's interesting. Uh, I'm sure there's a number of sections of our town that have no street lights, uh, thinking of some of the rural areas. So mm. to have kind of half street lights in a part or pedestrian lights would be a you know a step up from some of those parts of the town so um, and I'd be interested to know when that report does come back uh, whether those engineering stand like is that the engineering standards that we have received and haven't adopted yet or gonna so whether we're adopting the national standards I'd be interested to know that when that comes back anything else on Pickwick street lighting um, Anyone else on any of the other items in the director's report? Councillor Papp? Uh, 30 seconds, just under facilities and beautification. It actually, under trees. I'm looking forward to the report from uh, HR and others. I get a little concerned when I see we have a high uh, regard for the beautification of our town, yet we're unable to complete it due to staff shortages. So I'm looking forward to that discussion. This is a ex prime example of uh, things that people physically see and look to and when these things start going you know people start asking questions so I'm not asking for any comment just a, a reference when that comes back to us at that time thank you mr. mayor okay thank you any other items uh, a couple of a uh, couple of items you mentioned facilities council are very pleased to see the usage of our facilities and thank you very much for including those uh, usage statistics in the report um, arena hall activity usage up from last year same time <coughs> which is great um, and also uh, the Pelham arena itself is almost <coughs> is more than double from last year and as well the uh, old Pelham town hall activity is is more than double so that's great to see that those facilities are are being used as well so hours of usage is important um, the uh, Madam Director, you outlined in the report information about the speed watch um, and one of the roads there is hurricane. I've received some emails, etc., from folks on hurricane. We're very pleased that the speed watch was there, and now they're wondering what the next step is. What's the action that's going to be taken? Is do these numbers tell us that some action need to be taken? I think they'd be quite surprised by my read of the numbers. They're kind of okay. Can you just clarify that on Hurricane Road, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I apologize. My computer died. Um, I haven't gone through the latest batch with uh, the manager of Public Works yet. So the process we have there is he gets uh, asked the engineering department to do some analysis on the data, um, and then him and I review with site visits to see where things are next. So he made a recommendation there. Um, for the school zones, mm -hmm. um, but the latest batch we haven't been through yet. We're also trying to finalize that SOP to formalize this process so that when there are these times that perhaps the data isn't supporting the speeding concerns, 
um, it doesn't instantly get thrown out. We'll also right. consider the number of complaints and, and do some staff observation as well. Uh, so at this time, I don't have an answer until I've reviewed that further with the manager. Okay, thank you. And I think some of the residents are suggesting, they're suggesting a uh, stop signal, a stop sign along Hurricane at station. So that's what they perceive as the solution to the, to the problem. So anyways, we'll look forward to you uh, coming back to us about that. I think that's uh, everything that I have. So I'm going to call the question on the director's report. Thank you very much, Madam Director. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey. That committee, the whole, recommend the correspondence received from John and Wendy Abbott regarding the proposed street lighting of Picnic Place, Pickwick Place, be received and referred to staff. That's uh, for a report coming back to us. Anything further on that? You're going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey. That Committee of the Whole received the September 2016 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Report for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Papp. Quickly through you to the Director. <clears throat> Completion date on the pilot project for transit is March 31st, 2017. Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes it is. So what other plans do we have in place? Is it going to be part of budget considerations? Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you, and I think we're awaiting information. Councillor Kersey had put forward a proposal that Council approved right. in the summer about uh, fees and things like that. Is there any more opportunity or is inclination? Because I'm hearing different things at the provincial level for additional provincial funding for that, for our project, or no? I would say that we um, right we did make that pitch uh, to the uh, parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Transportation at AMO. They were quite impressed with our project and they had indicated that they would be open to that. So it is something that we should follow through yeah. on. Okay, good. That's all I need to know. They're actually uh, opening now for a um, some funding for transit at the provincial level. Yep. Do you have any comment to that to help the councillor? Uh, yes. So um, we're just waiting for the, the, the intake to be announced, uh, but they didn't announce that public uh, transit was one of the grant opportunities that would be coming next. So we're looking into that. We also do have that uh, uh, provincial gas tax uh, revenues that we can use at the report, the previous report. But we are watching for that that grant opportunity. Thank you. Others, <coughs> Councillor Papp? Just to pick up on that, I will be sharing some information. Obviously, uh, it's somewhat of a conflict, but uh, the work I'm doing now with the LIN, there is opportunities to apply for transportation funding in rural areas. So I may want to mm -hmm. talk to you about complementing, and that would cover everything from Grimsby, Beamsville, Pelham. So I will give you the information <coughs> that's coming through the proposed restructuring of the LINs. You've probably been reading about that. There is a funding envelope for transportation. All right. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. We'll look forward to sharing yeah, that. I'll share that with you. Got on transit? Yes. Councillor, go ahead. <coughs> um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I also uh, picked up on something at AMO which I found <coughs> kind of interesting and the provincial gas tax funding is, right. uh, part of it is, is based on numbers of service. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if we've given any consideration to talking to Wayne Fleet and maybe West Lincoln to make the odd bus run <coughs> into those communities. Uh, have those communities give us a nominal support like a thousand dollars or something along that line that increases our our service numbers uh, tremendously which should impact uh, positively on the on the provincial gas tax so uh, thank you something you can look at madam director we can look into that uh, it was interesting when we um, recently rode the bus um, the bus driver was indicating that there were uh, riders from Wellamport being dropped off in Fenway to go to Niagara College. So already we, we know that there is a need there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Others to transit? Just, uh, just some information to Council on that from the regional perspective, um, and I think it was at our last Council meeting, but they, they will be a correspondence, but they will be coming the regional group and um, Ms. Van Ravensway and 
or it was somebody and I met with, who is it? You, Mr. Ravensway and the CAO and I met with some of the transit providers across the region from Welland and Niagara Falls um, about that and they will be coming forward with a plan hopefully this fall uh, that, that for their councils to consider as the major transit providers and then also come out to uh, to our council as well about that. So they recognize, I think, the um, importance of our service but also how it differs from their service. And it's similar to Niagara and Lake in the sense that we have a private operator as opposed to a public operator. So look forward to that. Anything further for the director? Madam Director, I, thanks for including information about the uh, cenotaph and the mortar. Will there be a debriefing meeting with the volunteers at all? Uh, at this point, we weren't going to have, but we could. Um, kind of a, that's a request. Kind of a thank, a thank you to the to the volunteers that were involved. I think to bring them together to see what they thought about the event would be would be helpful. So I'll add that to your, to consider. Thank you. Anything else? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Been moved by Councillor King. The committee of the whole received the September 2016 clerk's report for information. Councillors, Councillor Papp, and then Councillor Kersey. Congratulations on your first civil marriage. <laughs> Define civil, will you? Anyways. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, my question was along the same lines. I was going to ask our clerk if she was nervous officiating <laughs> at the first, first <laughs> wedding. Uh, actually, no, it went very smoothly. Very good. I was very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, you're in a wind. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it, uh, it's hinted at here, but it's also in the CAO's uh, uh, report about uh, vexatious FOI requests. And, and I'm just wondering if we could ask, uh, give staff direction to look into just exactly what we can do to uh, avoid the overload that staff is getting because of uh, uh, FOI requests that are a little bit off the track. And that's. Uh, it's unfair that you know a lot of these are becoming more complex and in fact if we're being overloaded with this some of the real work can't be done so it's uh, you know it is a concern and, and I'm just wondering if uh, you know we could look at legal and see what is the proper definition of vexatious and uh, how can we determine that they are and how can we legally uh, not allow these to be to be heard and it just you know something I think that uh, should be should be given some okay, attention. Thank you. Any comment, Madam Clerk? Um, sorry, did you want to comment, Mr. CEO? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the um, frivolous and vexatious FOI requests are very difficult to uphold uh, with the Office of the Privacy Commissioner. Um, if we feel that the requests are frivolous and vexatious, we certainly can deny the requests on that basis, but uh, they would be subject to the potential for appeal. Um, so it would be something that I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend <coughs> myself without consultation with legal. Um, we did have one situation previously a few years ago uh, where we denied on the basis of frivolous and vexatious and uh, as advised by the Privacy Commissioner, they're very difficult to uphold so it's better just to process the applications and the, uh, the requests. So um, we do continue to work with the Privacy with the Privacy Commissioner's Office and with um, our legal counsel when we have <coughs> concerns in that regard. So we do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, my concern is workload and in fact if a lot of this is causing um, workload that is not necessary, I just think that if there was some way we could correct, could correct it, that that would take you know, some of the strain off, off our staff who are already uh, worked to the limit. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. And uh, I do want to underscore what the report says, which is that there were seven appeals or complaints from the Freedom of Information requests, and all of them were upheld. So we continue to uh, see that our our staff, predominantly our, our clerk that's with us this evening, does an excellent job of those uh, Freedom of Information requests, and all of those are upheld by the or have been upheld by the Privacy <coughs> Commissioner. So. 
congratulations and thank you for that. <coughs> Others to the uh, report before us? Uh, very pleased to, to see the, the work of the Seniors Advisory Committee oh, and Conversation Council Cafe. Cafe. They're working yeah. very well. Yes, so very Extremely pleased. And well. I think the next one's coming up, not this week, but next week. Is that well, correct? So we encourage all, and I think it's talking about transit. Is yep. that correct? So <laughs> Ms. Van Ravensway will be there. All right, we look forward to that. So join us at the Conversation Cafe. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And it has been moved by the uh, Councillor Papp that the Committee of the Whole receive the September 2016 Chief Administrative Officer Report for information. Questions, comments? There being none, call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I think there was a change to the, um, actually I should say that the, the, you missed one um, strategic plan or number one, so you'll add that to that, so thank you. It has been moved by Councillor Durley that this regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Monday, October 17th, 2016, following Council, unless you are called by the Mayor, and I would uh, encourage all to uh, come out and participate in the uh, budget uh, consultation that's coming up next Tuesday in this chamber. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.